Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Beaverton First United Methodist Church Online Worship. My name is Dondrea. I'm the praise leader here, and we are so glad you could join us this morning. Please now let us join together in song. heads together and join in prayer. Lord, as we gather in your name, we know we want to reach out and truly welcome everyone around us, no matter who they are. You reached out to all people in all kinds of conditions. Many of those people had been rejected by the society and their families. They were in need of compassion and friendship and a place of belonging. Lord, as you have welcomed us, regardless of our faults and failings, please let us also be a welcoming presence to all in your name. Amen. Deep and warm, the waters of my 
Today's scripture is from the book of Psalm, chapter 42, verses 1 through 2. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church, and welcome to our online worship. I'm Jefferson Chow, pastor of Beaverton First United Methodist Church, and today we have a special guest. Allow me to introduce Pastor Lamont Williams. Pastor Williams is a native Oregonian who formerly served in the ministry at Highland Christian Center for over 22 years under the leadership of the late Dr. W.G. Hardy Jr., during his time at Highland Christian Center, he also served as the co-choir director for Imago Day Choir and worship leader at Warner Pacific University. Pastor Williams' measure in ministry has directed him as a youth pastor, choir director, music director, and worship pastor. His passion for music ministry has advanced him in collaboration with other Christian conferences, workshops, and institutions in the gift of music as a ministry. He is currently served at Thy Kingdom Come International Church as exclusive associate pastor and worship coach for the United Methodist Denomination. Please welcome Pastor Lamont Williams. Hello everyone, I am Lamont Williams and I'm honored to serve as your worship coach. I know that you guys have also heard a lot about me the last few weeks or months. So if you don't mind, I would love to jump into the word of God with you. And then as the months and weeks roll out, we can uh, focus on some more um, critical things and, 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 and get just down to the work of the Lord to perfect what God has called us to do. Uh, today, uh, the title of this message is simply... A deer's desire. A deer's desire. Worship is the natural expression of what is at the center of our lives. The reason I'm passionate about praise and worship is because I believe it permeates all that we do. I, I believe it's that powerful. Not just on Sunday mornings through what we're singing, our hymns, our congregational songs, our praise and worship. Uh, but I've learned that it is a lifestyle that brings glory to God. That's the passion. Because it brings honor and glory to our Father. People living their lives at the, for and to the glory of God, eating, drinking, laughing, loving. When done to the glory of God, it is worship. A life lived to the glory of God is a result of a person in love with God. To be a worshiper of God and a lover of God is the greatest commandment of God. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 4 uh, verse 24, God is a spirit and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what this is saying plainly that loving God and taking on what it takes to be in relationship with God is the only thing that matters. Everything else comes second. Also, and of course, it is asking a question. Are you willing and able to humble yourself and submit yourself uh, and commit yourself to the will of God, to your calling, to your relationship? Let me tell you a story. So this past weekend, about 16, 18 of my family members, uh, we went down and took a trip to Lincoln City uh, just to enjoy life and to take a break from our everyday lives. And one of the goals that I had was to make sure that I walked on the beach. I love walking on the beach. I feel like I can hear God. And on the third day of this trip, I was able to complete my goal. And here are a few of the thoughts I had while walking on the beach for this particular time of me being uh, able to impart into you uh, what God is giving me in the music ministry. I only hope that you are blessed. So as I walked on the beach and I, I started watching and listening to the waves. And as I listened, um, I listened to the wind that blew past my ears. And I watched and I listened to the birds that were flying over. 
And I reflected on something that the Bible says in the book of St. Luke, chapter number 19 and verse 40. And it says, uh, and this is Jesus replies to the Pharisees and says, I guarantee you this, that if they are quiet, the stones will cry out in praise in their place. You might wonder why I mentioned that particular scripture in this particular context. Well, because I realized that at the moment that 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 particular moment, I realized that praising God is a choice. Surrendering your life to God is a choice. Giving your life to Christ, giving God glory and honor through music is a choice. And when he is and what he is saying, if you, for whatever reason, you decide not to give him praise, to give him honor, or if you are not willing to change when necessary or to be humble and to love him and his people, if you, my people, are not willing to honor me with the fruit of your lips, me being God, God, with the fruit of your lips and using your gifts and singing and music, being a musician, if you are decided to be cocky, God is saying that's okay because the rocks will cry out in your place. The ocean will roar in your place. The end all be all is this. God will always get the glory. Or how about this? Hypothetically speaking. Out of the blue, you get a sore throat, an itchy throat. From an itchy throat, you get a, you know even more sore throat. And your voice gets a little raspy. And as the days and weeks progress, your voice gets worse and worse. Then you go to the doctor. And the doctor tells you you have some rare disease that affects your voice. And in the next coming weeks, you will lose the ability to speak for the rest of your life. I can almost guarantee that one of the first things that you're going to do is pray, cry and pray. And if you are a lover of music, like I am, you're going to sing as much as possible. You're going to tell your loved ones, your family members, your spouse, your children, how much you love them because you realize that in the few days, they will never get the opportunity again to hear you speak. What? would your praise, your honor, your glory look like once your voice has been taken from you? I want to leave that there for you to ponder on throughout the week. What would your praise look like if you lost that? How would you give God glory? How would you honor him? You see, a lot of times we get into this thing called ministry. We get saved and we get into ministry and we forget the purpose we forget the reason why, we forget why we do what we do, why we have been called to do what we do. A lot of times we just get into it as business as usual, and that, that's unacceptable. If we are at a secular job, maybe. Listen, we have to remember that there is a bigger responsibility on the music ministry as a whole. Have you ever walked into a store and the music was off and you was like, hmm, this place must be closed. Have you ever walked into a store and started singing the music? The people around us have realized how powerful music is. That's why it plays everywhere we go. So Deuteronomy 6 and 5. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your might. Jesus picked up on this when he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? But then Jesus does the unexpected. He attaches another commandment to it. Leviticus chapter number 19, verse 18. Love your neighbor as yourself. And this is the genius of Jesus. He shows us that loving God, worshiping God is intricately connected to loving people, loving God, love people. Peter, Peter said, yes, I love you, Lord. Jesus says, then feed my sheep. Love your neighbors. Love me. Love, your, love my people. Love the people. What Jesus is doing here is showing us that to be lovers of God is to be lovers of his people. We all know that worshiping God is not just singing songs or raising our hands. To worship God, 
means, and worshiping God means to live a life a certain way. Worshiping God involves reaching out to the hurting, helping the hungry, fighting injustice, showing mercy and compassion, and so much more. All of them together to one to make great worship. And what Jesus is getting to here, as do other people in the Bible, is that it's not okay to stretch out your hands to God and not stretch out your heart to his people. Be by using your gifts that he is giving you. Stretch them to God and his people. Do you know that if you are living the life of a worshiper, if you are committed to your gift and your calling and doing what it takes to make sure that your gift and calling is acceptable and pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service, did you know that in the middle of your music and singing, people that were lost can be found? Did you know that? In the middle of your singing songs and playing your instruments, did you know that people that need peace can find it in the middle of worship, in the middle of praise? And do you understand that in the middle of you giving your gift, justice can be found, the broken can be mended, they can be mended back together again, forgiveness can be released, unity can be released, Unity, all that we need can be released. Do you know praise and worship can change the heart of a person who didn't like a certain nationality? Now listen, in our culture, culture, music culture, there is a severe and wicked disconnect between loving God and the love of people. But here is the slight difference. We share our love and affection for God through music and our affection and love for, to God, through God, for his people, to the congregation. So listen, in Isaiah's days, God rebuked his people for their expression of love for him because it was uncompared by the love for his people. These worshipers brought the right offerings. They uh, had the they, they performed the right postures, but their worship was found unacceptable, unacceptable because the rest of their lives were uh, characterized, connected to by sin, uh, oppression, greed, and injustice. God says to Israel. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 13, bring your worthless offerings no longer. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Yes, even though you pray many times a day, I will not listen. Your hands are full of bloodshed. Could you imagine, or if I take it a step further, can you find an area where God is saying possibly because of how you are, we are handling our gifts, your, our callings, our love, our passion, our affection, because of how you are handling the fruits of the spirit, because of how we have turned this particular place of, 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 of worship into a political arena, a place where uh, the spirit is full of anger instead of joy. Because of this, I will hide my eyes from you. And when you lift your voice in song, and when you lift your instruments up, I will not listen because your hands have been bloodshed, because we have lost the reason why we sing, why we use our gifts, why we honor God. I would hate for that to happen. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15 says, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips that gives thanks to his name. And do not neglect doing good and sharing with others for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 17, Paul uh, referred to himself in this service as a, a drink, uh, of, uh, like a drink poured out as an offering to the Most High God. His action and life as a whole were compared to an act of worship. And in Romans chapter 12, Paul tells us 
to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. For this is our reasonable service of worship. So with that said, worship is everything you do. It is the natural expression that God is at the center of your life. But what does that mean? And what does that look like when we gather together then uh, in a corporate worship? I believe that incredible things happen in the heavenly realms when God's people gather uh, to uh, deliberately give him glory. And this is where we as a church could benefit from some biblical teaching and direction. We must always remember that worship is about God. Worship is always beginning and ending with God. First Peter chapter four, verses 10 uh, through 11 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards to God's grace in its various forms. I pray that as I have spoken that you have found many things out of this message, a dear's desire to long to remember what salvation felt like in the beginning, to repent and say, Father, I'm sorry that I've kind of shifted this thing. Father, I'm sorry that I haven't allowed myself to perfect or to learn anymore, to be in love with you anymore. I've been in the place where I did it as business as usual, serving uh, in a music ministry that had maybe a little over 100 people. And I was the person who was shepherding them. When you are over a ministry, you are shepherding. You are a co-shepherd with the senior pastor. And I got into a place of business as usual. I'm doing the work. I'm doing everything. But guess who was thirsty? Me. Guess who was giving everybody else something and getting nothing? Me. Because the work got important. I lost sight of the vision. I lost sight of the purpose. I lost sight of why he called me. I don't want to be like some of them people in the Bible where when you lose sight, God will literally snatch away the gift or the call or the crown for you to be king. That he snatches it away because you lost sight. I didn't, I, I, when I realized it, I said, there's a problem here, buddy. <laughs> You've lost sight. You're not panting for the water. Jesus, the living water. You're not looking for it. You're not thirsty for it. And as great as God is, how amazing he is of how often he blesses us and gives us manna from heaven in, 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 in the spiritual and in natural, all that we need, sometimes we lose sight. Sometimes we allow division to enter into our ministries when that's not what God intended us to do. Choir and the worship leader and this and it's not what he wanted. And I remember losing sight because I went through all of those, those transitions. I wondered, God, why is this happening? Why is division here and why is that there? It was because I lost sight. It was because I was, I, I was dying of thirst, of spiritual thirst. I, I urge you to be like the deer, to fully submerge yourself, walk in and, and then drink from the well drink from the river to learn the sound so that when the enemy comes in like a flood you can fully be in faith that God will lift up a standard against it I hope that I've encouraged you to push reset and listen I press it every morning every day that God gives me new mercy I'm saying God thank you for the reset Thank you for the renewed mind. Thank you for the activities of my limbs. Thank you for this gift. Thank you for this anointing. Now, I read in the scripture, it was in 1 Peter, this gift was not given to us for us. It was given to us to give. That doesn't mean it doesn't affect us. But God says, listen, I gave you this gift. I saved you just because I was being nice. But I'm giving you this gift to share with others. Don't lose sight of that. Because every time I do praise and worship, I am blessed by it. But I know the calling. 
I am a lover. I'm a keeper of it. But I, and I'm blessed by it. But it's to share. It's to give. I pray that in your in this journey that we have together and learning different styles and different ways to do things or just to upgrade what's already happening. I pray that you are like the deer and you're panting for the water, that you're panting for something new, something fresh, something insightful, something that may bring the church together, something some that may bring the, the outside. The Bible says do whatever it takes to compel them. Who is them? The, the, the unbelievers, the wayward ones, the ones who are not uh, go to church every week. You know, we, we, we I, I can't remember the name that we call them, but the only, the ones that come Christmas, uh, Mother's Day, some Father's Day, um, you know, the holiday, Easter. Oh, the Easter is the biggest one. But what does it take to compel them to come more than just once or four times a year? What is that? What is it going to take? Sometimes it takes us getting on one accord and being refreshed in Jesus being renewed in our mind, body, and soul, having prayer, having revival, bringing God's people, the workers of the vineyard together so that we can do what God has called us to do. And that is to simply go out and compel those to come to feel this love that we feel, to enjoy this relationship that you and I enjoy. I'll say it one more time. I pray that you were blessed. And I can't wait till we can join together in ministry and in person. This COVID-19 is driving us crazy. There's, it was going down. Now it's peaking back up. Uh, but I pray whenever that happens, um, I, I pray that the, the atmosphere has already been set. I'm Lamont Williams, and I will see you all soon. God bless. Oldest. There's the soft sand and there's the hard sand. Soft sand is a little bit more difficult to walk through. And my destination is, of course, the harder sand, the more solid sand, and then the water. Uh, I want to get to the water because it sort of reminds me what the Bible says that Christ is a living water. So I want to get to that water where he is. And you can't build anything on sinking sand got to be solid foundation for us to build personally solid foundation to build in ministry have to have a solid foundation to build and you can't build when somebody's divided listen and I'm still talking about worship you cannot build if the foundation ain't solid the foundation is not uh, laid with love, affection, submission, commitment, devotion, respect, honor for Christ first and then those in leadership. See, a lot of times, uh, and I can just speak specifically to the African American culture, sometimes we get into a place where I, this right here is good for me. We don't need to grow, we don't need to add more. But then I beg to differ, because if that's the case, we would just be living in a life, a life that would start over every single day. And I guarantee that's not what Christ wants. So we are to grow daily. We are to um, walk towards goals. You can't stay the same if you got goals. If any of you have ever been married or are married, you understand, especially if you've been married longer than 10 years, five years, that there will be consistent change to have an effective marriage. Same thing with Christ, same thing with ministry. Christ is constantly changing us to taking us higher. Question is, are you willing to go higher? Are you willing to learn more? Maybe do more or less. Are you willing to change your heart and your mind for the greater good?
Since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boost in the hope of the glory of God. And hope 
does not push us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Go forth and pour out God's love to the world which was provided for all his children.